Even though the topic of today's episode isn't necessarily exercise related, it would be safe to say that it gave me a bit of a workout this week. Imagine paying $12 for something, then you find yourself struggling to put it on, only to have it rip. Now, because I didn't have time to go to the store for another pair, I put some clear nail polish on the rip and hoped they would hold out for the next few hours until I could take them off and throw them away. Women, you probably know what I'm referring to. Men, don't worry, there's a version for you that's available that, after a Google image search, is now painfully seared into my mind. You're listening to The Story Behind, the extraordinary history of the ordinary. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is The Story Behind Pantyhose. By the way, the men's version is lovingly referred to as Mantyhose. But first, a quick message. Want a visual element to the story behind? Make sure you're following the story behind on Instagram for behind the scenes pictures, fun facts from the week's episode, little story behind field trips, and callbacks to past episodes. One of my favorite things to post are the book sightings of people holding the story behind book. So if you have a copy, please take a photo and tag me so I can repost it in my stories and highlights. There are a few other exclusive goodies over on Instagram, so be sure you're following Story Behind Pod. I can't start to talk about pantyhose without first talking about stockings. Now, the history of stockings goes back pretty far. So we're just going to skip ahead to 1930s when researchers at the DuPont Company were working with polymers to create something similar to silk. When they found that one of their mixtures was able to be stretched, the age of nylon emerged. It was marketed as strong as steel, as fine as a spider's web, and originally used for fishing line and toothbrush bristles, which we talked about in the story behind the toothbrush, and surgical sutures. But as they progressed in testing this new material, they realized it could be used to make stockings for women. A fun fact about nylon is that DuPont chose not to register it as the trademark, Instead, they wanted the word nylon to become associated with stockings and even used interchangeably, which some still do. Once they demonstrated nylon in nylon stockings at the 1939 New York World's Fair, they caught on quickly. Even though it was a breakthrough in science, DuPont Vice President Charles Stein didn't showcase it to the scientific community at the fair. Instead, he decided to unveil it to 3,000 women's club members. Nylon went on to do more than just make a cheaper, easier way to make stockings, like they made parachutes and tents for soldiers during World War II with it. Although stockings became harder to find in America at that time. Women began drawing lines on the back of their legs with makeup pencils to make it look as if they were wearing stockings, since back then the stockings had seams. But when the war was over, stocking sales jumped quickly. As I mentioned, the full history of stockings goes much further back in history than pantyhose. Stockings were made by weaving silk, linen, cotton, and even wool. The word stocking comes from the base word stock, which refers to the bottom of a tree or the stump. Before DuPont introduced nylon stockings, the garment was used for an added layer of warmth for women under skirts and dresses. But like its predecessor, nylon stockings still had to be held up by garters or garter belts. For actors and dancers in movies, television, and on stage, sometimes the stockings were sewn to briefs to make moving easier without worrying about the stocking slipping. Pantyhose, though, is most commonly attributed to Alan Gant Sr., the head of Glen Raven Mills, a textile company. But we can actually thank his wife for the inspiration. According to Gant's son, Gant's wife Ethel was on a train back to their home state of North Carolina after taking a trip to see the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade when she told her husband it would be her last trip with him while she was pregnant, since she was finding herself uncomfortable wearing stockings and her garter belt. This was 1953, a time when proper women were rarely seen without some sort of hosiery. Gant got the idea to fasten her stockings to her underwear instead. When they got home, Ethel began sewing a prototype for her husband to take back to work so he could figure out a way to produce more of them. In 1959, the first pair of pantyhose were introduced, and although some women enjoyed ditching garter belts and garters in favor of the all-in-one invention, it wasn't until a few years later when they really hit their stride, and all because of a new trend in ladies' fashion, the miniskirt. Garters and garter belts weren't fashionable to be seen with the miniskirts of the 60s. When pantyhose were offered without seams around the same time, it gave the miniskirt wearer's legs a more natural look. Through the years, more improvements were made, such as control top and more durability. One main attraction for women was finding a pair that wouldn't sag after a few wears. 
But even the popular egg-shaped container introduced by Legs in the 1970s couldn't ultimately save pantyhose from going on the decline in recent years. One other tangent I should point out was actress Julie Newmar, known for her portrayal of Catwoman in the Batman series of the 1960s. She invented her own type of pantyhose. She realized that many brands and styles that had extra elastic for shaping flattened out parts of her anatomy she wanted to accentuate instead. She patented a pair of pantyhose with an extra shaping band made of elastic that was sewn in vertically, which, in her words, enhances the natural shape of a wearer's derriere by giving it cheeky relief. But as time went on and styles became more casual, the sale of pantyhose declined. By the 90s, pantyhose became more associated with special occasions and corporate environments than everyday casual. Tights have come more into fashion as well as woven textures and fishnets, but for those wanting the natural look of legs to go with their skirts, the trend seems to be just that, natural. Michelle Obama, who stands at 5 feet 11 inches, has said she gave up on them years ago when they continuously ripped as soon as she would put them on. I'm 5'8", Michelle, and I still feel your pain. <laughs> Information for this episode was sourced from Smithsonian, ThoughtCo, Racked, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. This week on Trivia Tuesday in the Story Behind Discussion Group on Facebook, Jeffrey posted, Photograph was the title of a Billboard Hot 100 Top 20 song for Ed Sheeran, which peaked at number 10, Nickelback, which peaked at number 2, Def Leppard, which peaked at number 12, and Ringo Starr, which peaked at number 1. Adam posted, under French copyright law, it is technically illegal to take pictures of the Eiffel Tower at night, although the building design itself, classified as a work of art, entered the public domain in 1993. The lights were installed in 1985 and are still covered by copyright. Jim posted, bees can smell fear. Joe posted the year 2019 will be 365 days, 5 hours, 43 minutes, and 12 seconds long. If you'd like to talk about trivia you pick up during the week and have it read on the show, join the Story Behind discussion group on Facebook. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash the story behind and who get access to the full scripts of these episodes before they even go live and a bonus episode every month. And thank you to newest executive producer, Don. The full list of executive producers can be found at thestorybehindpodcast.com slash executive producers. Thanks for listening. Okay, I don't know where else to put this information for the episode, so I'm putting it at the end. In Grand Haven Township in Michigan, pantyhose has become an ongoing problem for some residents, particularly that for five years pantyhose has been discarded on the roadways and no one can figure out why. <laughs> if any listeners want to make a new mystery podcast, this would be a great story to take and run with. Get it? Pantyhose? Run with? Get it? Because pantyhose and runs and... <laughs>